how do I make it big? <laughs> okay, we can figure this out. All right. Now, oh, interesting. It seems that the Facebook has changed its um, its live uh, format. So, g'day. I'm Joy, and I'm very glad to be speaking about facing adversity on today's Rise program. Thank you for the opportunity. I uh, have become an unwitting expert on facing adversity. Who else can relate? <laughs> I have died six times in this life. I am living proof that you only get to die when you're absolutely supposed to and not a moment before. I have been given up on by five different doctors for five different reasons. I am living proof that incurable means curable only from within. I uh, was, I don't just want to tell you about how I have faced adversity, because we all have, haven't we? I teach how to experience joy regardless of circumstance. And today in this segment, I'm going to teach you some of the ways that I not only survive my cartoon-like life, but I thrive in it. And these are skills that will work for anyone who uses them. And they'll work for any challenge. Again, I'm living proof. <laughs> and the story that I've chosen today, um, I'm, I'm actually, I'm going to invite you, because it's going to be um, a part of your story too, to choose your biggest challenge right now. What adversity are you facing right now? Because as I share the story that I've chosen, which is uh, how I was bitten by a black widow um, on the 2nd of March last year, and uh, turned that, because now a, a black widow is 15 times more toxic than a rattlesnake. Um, they, uh, they inject their venom to dissolve the insides of whatever it is that they want to eat. So... This is the story that I'm sharing because these tools, as I said, work for venomous spiders as much as they do for venomous people, for poisonous patterns and behaviors. Hmm. Nobody ever died from a spider bite, you know, or a snake bite. What kills you is the poison coursing through your blood to stop your heart. And I found that a wrong that someone has done you is kind of like that. We have the choice to nip it in the bud, which is one of the things I'm going to teach you about in just a minute. Because if we don't, the poison from that hurt tends to go into every part of your body and mind and taints and poisons your future relationships and even sometimes how you feel about yourself. Agreed? Has anybody had that situation where they've been wronged? Whoops. And, uh, and it's tainted them sometimes even for the rest of their lives. So it's not just about facing adversity, it's about experiencing joy regardless of adversity. Because I've noticed, and I bet you have too, that we can't always choose what happens to us. <laughs> but we can learn how to choose how we're going to respond to what happens to us. And it's this choice that matters. Because it's this choice that determines what happens next. So, are you ready for the story? Have you got your own challenge that you want to run through? The, some of the uh, things that I do to be able to bring myself into a place where I can actually stand and face adversity. Hmm. 
or in this case a Black Widow Spider public service announcement. If you are hot tubbing outside in California, shake out your towels and your dressing gowns before climbing into them. Because that is how the, the widow uh, gifted me her venom. Now, the first thoughts in my head were, oh, not, oh, what a gift. No, those were not my first thoughts. They weren't even my second or third. I knew something was drastically wrong, and uh, as California really only has a few poisonous things that hurt that much, um, it was pretty easy to track it down, especially in the environment that I, that I was in. And so the first thing that I did was assess the risks um, and discovered that most people don't die from black widows. Uh, the, you know, if you're young or old or really sick, yeah, sure. But that going to a hospital would be way worse and the antivenine was <laughs> way worse than the bite itself. Just, you'd have to really be on death's door to, to want to put that in your body. It's, it's bad. And so I, all that was left was for me to decide, okay, so I'm not, I'm not going outside of this. I know that I can handle this because in a previous um, adversarial adventure, I was bitten next to the brainstem by a brown recluse. And uh, that actually resulted in me becoming white peacock woman, but that's a whole other story for a whole other time. Suffice to say, I knew that having been able to survive this um, bite, which was the result of the careless prayer. Me, just I need additional brain function. I, I, I need to have a, um, more access to my frontal lobes. Which I was hit by a drunk driver at 24, and I didn't have a lot of access to my frontal lobes. Uh, so I had to learn how to reprogram the neurological pathways of my brain to bypass the injuries. So I think and operate from a very different part of my brain. So I'm a bit odd and also why I'm so inspiring. So my inspiration has got nothing to do with the bits of paper after my name or, uh, or the letters after my name. It's got everything to do with people that can look at me and go, well, if she can do what she's done, then I can do this. And it's true, darling, it's true. So I just wanted to give you that little bit of background. Um, and the, white, the, the peacock is important because... Um, they're revered in so many religions because peacocks eat venomous spiders and snakes and uh, alchemize that venom into the glory of their feathers. So I knew that I could do this. So all that was left was me for me to decide how I was going to feel about it because I knew that if I dropped into fear, all hell would break loose. And um, while I was reprogramming, while I was reprogramming my, my brain after the, the, the drunk driver, I loaded the program for joy as the base operating system. So I have trained myself to look for the most joyful thought in any circumstance and go with that because I found that it will invariably lead me to where I want to go as opposed to where I'm fearing. So I had two ways of thinking about this Black Widow bite. One, this is a disaster and the worst possible timing and I, 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 it, this is the worst thing that could happen to me. And I want you to think about your challenge right now and observe the thoughts that are in your head about it right now. What do you think of when you think of your, of your challenge? Got it? Okay. Now... I want you to follow those thoughts along their natural conclusion and see where they lead you. It's nowhere you want to go, is it? I knew that if I followed the thoughts that I was having, my initial thoughts on the Black Widow, which is, no, this is a disaster, how could this be, everything's ruined, they took me nowhere I wanted to go. And so, put your thought in your hand right now and you're going to do with me what I did which is turn the thought over. Now I want you to look at what is the exact opposite of that thought. This is the worst that could happen. Well, in this case, this is the worst that could happen, is this is the best that could happen to me. And frankly, I couldn't go there because it really didn't feel like this could be true. Um, and it has to be have at least equal validity 
in order for this particular tool to work. So I fell back. What's your exact opposite? I want you to ask, is there any possibility at all that this could be equally true to the thought that's been taking you nowhere you want to go? The thought that I use when I can't find a good positive thought in any way is this is a miracle I don't understand yet. So if you don't have one, try that. Use that. This is a miracle I don't want to understand yet. That's gotten me out of so many situations you just can't even imagine. So the opposite to the thought for me that this, this bite was a bad thing happening to me was this is a good thing happening to me. I knew that it was a miracle that I didn't understand yet. And I also knew that the last bite had resulted in me evolving into the next grandest version of myself and fulfilling a prophecy, actually, in which I became this <laughs> white peacock woman. Once you have that thought, that equally valid thought, whether it be your own or this is a miracle I don't understand yet, grab onto it and do not allow yourself the indulgence of any other thought, especially if, like me with the Black Widow, it's a crisis situation. If there's any chance that this is, you might die or this is really, really bad, you cannot allow yourself any other thought. Hold on to the one that's going to take you to where it is you want to go because it will open doors that are simply not available when you're locked in fear and all you can think of is, ah! Does that make sense? You can put your challenge in the comments if you like. And I, 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 I know I'm, I'm going a bit fast, um, half an hour, a lot of it. I'm just going to focus back in on what it is that you have going on with your challenge now. Here is something that makes a huge, huge difference in order to keep you lined up with that thought. And that is, this is happening for me, not to me. Now, I'm pretty sure you've heard that before. But when you are locking it in in a crisis situation, everything changes, everything have to, has to. So I understood that the brown recluse bite had um, been a result of me requesting additional brain function. And I, in fact, got 23-25% additional uh, brain function. So I knew that this, too, was a gift. And I wonder, in fact, if you have had difficult challenges in the past that have later turned out to be a gift. They do, if you decide that they will. Now it's not easy to hang on to, to those thoughts that you know, are going to take you to where you want to go. I did pretty well the first night, but the next morning I logged onto Facebook and I, I put up a prayer request and said I'd been bitten by a black widow and my Facebook family had gone completely nuts and was just so, oh my God, you're going to die, you have to get to the hospital, my friend lost his leg, my friend lost her eyes, I'm still recovering nine years later and I just, all of a sudden, the fear took hold. I let it take hold and it took the reins and as it did, I was holding a, a cup of uh, hot, hot lemon juice and uh, within minutes, the bite, which was on my left thigh, was the same temperature as the hot lemon. And I thought, ooh, that can't be good. So I had it packed in, bentonite, in a bentonite clay poultice, um, which is, it draws... 31 times its molecular weight in toxins. So I'm actually going to be teaching how to make the healing clay that makes such a big difference in pulling out poisonous, well, anything really. Um, but I, I knew this was bad. So I unwrapped the cellophane and I took the poultice off and the bite site was flaming red and it had grown 20% in the few minutes that I logged on and looked at this and let fear take hold. So that's when I knew, okay, we need some additional structures in place. Because especially in fearful or stressful situations, you have to have guardrails <laughs> to, to keep your focus on, on what it is that you want to bring in. So the trigger for me in this was Black Widow. It was scary. Uh, so I removed that label and she became Grandmother Spider. And words have such enormous power 
and affect this so completely, that's why we call it spelling, that just removing the label and exchanging it for a different one can cause an astonishing physiological, physiological shift. For example, um, this was something else I used, removing the label pain and replacing it with extreme sensation was able to bring it down a wee notch. So give that a go. <clears throat> so grandmother spider she became and uh, I wanted to fear her less and so I asked her please grandmother will you be my teacher will you will, will you teach me she said of course nothing at all so I took that as a yes and started behaving as if she was my teacher as if she was my mentor learning okay all right these are the things I know I know that this is happening for me not to me and so I'm going to look for the gifts there's always gifts I decided anything as painful as this had to have a whole ton of gifts and I would not stop unpacking them until I was done. It took seven months. Amazing, incredible, crazy months. Oh, the, the, the stomach cramps were pretty bad for like the first five days and I was exhausted for the next five days as I integrated. But after that, it was all about learning how to alchemize the venom. Um, the first bite I, I had uh, had given me more brain functioning, so I thought, ooh, okay, so so what can I, how can I, how can I use this venom? I asked Grandmother Spider, how do how do spiders and, and peacocks play? You know what <laughs> what's the story here? She said, well, peacocks alchemize venom into whatever they want into their feathers. I provide the venom, and it was at that moment I realized I can use this venom for additional healing. And so I started to uh, teach myself how to alchemize it into micro doses to dissolve the oxidative stress walls in my forebrain that had been caused by the drunk driver. Because the problem was anytime I went into stress, the soft tissue would swell at the base of my neck, blood would stop going to my brain after the accident, and I'd have about three minutes before I blacked out. And every one of those blackouts caused an oxidative stress wall in my frontal lobes. And uh, I never knew if I'd wake up from any of the blackouts. So that's how I became a world expert on clearing stress in three minutes or less. And now grandmother was telling me uh, I was learning how to dissolve these walls. I now have access to brain functioning and memories I have not had for 35 years. It's phenomenal. Um, so just, just for a moment, look at, at, look at your challenge and observe it. How does it look when it's happening to you? How does it look when it's happening for you? And just let yourself sink in to this new truth. This is an equally valid truth, but it, it takes you to a very different place and it opens very different doors that are simply not available for you over here. So what if it is a gift? And if it was a gift, what sort of gifts might you get? And what can you do to shift your perspective to understand more deeply how this is helping you evolve? Huh. The first time I, I, I really accessed Grandmother Spider as an ally was about uh, two weeks after that where I came to Los Angeles um, to visit with my friend. We were going to be interviewed by the Los Angeles Times for the Red Tent. I walked into her house and I started sneezing and I sneezed my head off for an hour because my friend has a cat and I have a massive allergy to cats and this is I'm, I, this is crazy. I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I have to stop. I wonder, if, I wonder if Grandmother Spider can help me with this. It's absolutely true. It's one of my favorite things ever. I put one hand on the bite and the other hand on where I was really feeling the, the allergens and I said, please grandmother, can you help me just eliminate these cat allergens? I felt the energy of Black Widow come up, confront the allergens, say, Black Widow bitches, there's no room for you here. And the allergens went poof, I watched them poof. Instantly, I stopped sneezing, my throat opened up, my eyes dried up. I have not been allergic to cats ever since. I spent the next six weeks cat sitting, uh, uh, a cat that absolutely had to be wrapped around my neck at all times, otherwise she would just cry. I visited a new friend who has 23 cats, not a sneeze. 
so uh, that was one of the that that, that was one of the first um, healings and uh, and awarenesses that I had that this was huge. This was huge. What else can I do? So that's when I spent the next like seven months, just or six months, diving in to see what else can I make it do. And I I discovered how to do accelerated healing, and I, I discovered all about. The web and the grid and 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 how the world works on, oh, the gifts that have come from this have been beyond anything I could have imagined because I insisted upon it. The thoughts that we choose to think determine how things go. They just do. Our thoughts create. Our words make manifest. Our actions just reflect our thoughts and words. So the first thing in any challenge is to make sure that your thoughts are lined up with where you want to go and that you have in place structures that will provide you with strength and support to stop you from uh, dropping into the fear that we're all programmed with. Just having a look, I, I just realized I'm, I'm live and I should be checking though. Okay, so we've got 20 minutes. And uh, if you have any questions, please do let me know in the comments. If you have um, any challenge that you want to go through with me, and we can do the first parts of, uh, of the protocol that I do, which is, again, assessing risks, um, so that you know where you stand. Because if you don't make yourself look at, okay, what's the worst that could happen here, then... Fear will make whatever that is way bigger. So make yourself look at that first. All right, what really is the worst that could happen here? And once you know, then you know. Then make yourself look at what is the best thing that could happen here in this situation. And let yourself really explore that. And then get down to, okay, so... Have I in the past found that even though I had no idea how, everything that I needed was handed to me precisely at the moment that I needed? Never a moment too soon, never a moment too late, so that we know it's not you, it's your guides, it's your guardians, it's upstairs management. Has it happened to you like that? that you've got no idea how you're going to be able to pay this rent or, or, or do this thing. And there it is, in a way that you could not have managed. The more we become aware of these patterns, and the more we drop into deep gratitude for them and start asking, okay, so not, um, oh, how fortunate I was, jolly good, but uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, and more please. <laughs> When we really know who walks with us, we're never afraid again. In truth, this is my biggest tool, skill, perspective to getting through any challenge, although I have, as I said, the whole protocol, which I'm going to be doing as a five-day challenge, I think, inviting people to come and with their challenges and learn how to vanquish them, move through them from triumph. So do drop me a DM or, or um, go to my website experiencejoy.com and, uh, and message me from there. Actually, if you do that, I will send you a 15-minute video that shows you how to relax instantly, keep a clear head no matter what's going on, and clear stress from your body. Because these are the first three things um, that are essential in order for you to be able to deal clear-headedly with any any adversity. You've got to be able to... Albert Einstein said that we cannot solve our problems with the same mind that created them. And this is in part because the mind that, that that's deeply involved in the problem and the adversity right now is your primitive brain centers, uh, which have been trained to respond exactly the same way to every single stressor, regardless of what it is. And 
so in that video it will show you how to help your brain have a composed response to stress instead of an automatic stress reaction so that no matter what is going on around you you are able to think clearly this this is huge it's an enormous gift so let's take a breath There's so very much that I, I want to, to share with you, um, and I think I am just about out of time. I've got a couple of minutes left to go. So, mm, I will tell you that Grandmother Spider is still my ally, and that um, I am still alchemizing different things and still learning from her and I hope that I always will be. I want to talk some more about how this works with poisonous people <laughs> and patterns and behaviors. We cannot experience ourselves as light without darkness. When can you see a candle flame? Can you see it when you hold it up to the sun? You really can't. You can see it best in the darkness. Darkness is nothing more than the absence of light. To banish darkness, all we ever have to do is bring light. When you walk into a room, you don't have to don special clothing or say magic incantations if the room is dark. You just flick a switch and the light comes on and what happens to the darkness then? It's the same with adversity. The darkness in adversity gives us the opportunity to shine our light. Really, darling, how much would we grow if we all lived in utopia and everything was wonderful? We'd be bored, wouldn't we? Come on. Be truthful. How long would you watch a movie in which the heroes and sheroes never had anything that they had to overcome? Yeah, nah, I thought so. What if everything that has happened to you so far has been to create who and what you are now? Able to look into the eyes of the people that you've come here to help and say, I know how you feel. I've been there. Take my hand. Let's walk out of this together. And what if whatever it is that you're facing right now in these most interesting challenging times was that as well? A huge gift to you. A miracle you perhaps don't understand yet. To strengthen all of your determination and your courage, your compassion, your empathy, your wisdom, everything that you need in order to do what's next. If you need help with that, I can help. In fact, I guarantee it, I refuse payment if, if you do not notice an immediate positive difference with my work. My website again is experiencejoy.com and I can teach you how to experience joy regardless of circumstance, how to reprogram your brain so that your memories don't hurt you anymore, and so that you have a baseline of joy, so that the negative poisonous programs and patterns that you are perhaps here to resolve for your lineage are resolved. And everybody in your direct genetic line benefits. What if we are the ones we've been waiting for? What if this current challenge is a gift. It's the bigger the challenges, the bigger the gifts. Have you noticed that? So if you want me to help a little bit, um, put your challenge in the, in the comments or your questions, let me know what you thought and uh, I will come back and check them. And if you need a little bit more help, I'll see you over on experiencejoy.com. I can absolutely hook you up. Let's see. Oh, look at that. 30 seconds to go. <clears throat> Here's a blessing. You ready? Oh, we give thanks for the light of this beautiful being. 
We give thanks for all of their helpers, seen and unseen, and for all of the miracles, known and unknown, that help them to face their adversity and move into triumph just as it was designed. You've got this. They've got this. You can't fail. They won't let you. And neither will I. You can do this. Mm, yes, yes, yes.